Although you have said that the white race is doomed and that they are a race of devils, do you make any distinction? Are there any good white people? For example, suppose I were to ask you whom you think is the best white man. Is there any such thing? I let the Bible answer that. He says, no, not one. You can think of from way back in the day? I can talk some more about it. Yeah. I can remember when my daddy went to the cotton field to, to chop cotton. And there's a big old oak tree sitting over on the cotton field. And the balls come out there riding a the horse. And uh, he slapped that across the head two or three times with one of them hand, hand, hand holes to bust and uh, run him out under the tree. Me and Mama was sitting on the object of a tree. And he told us, if you want to stay on my farm, you better get up and get to go to work. Or don't you get the hell off of it? I never will forget that. And uh, Daddy worked all that day. We worked all that day, but we went in that night. Uh, he cut out the lights on every house that it had lights on, and told the people they they didn't want to work. They sleep in the dark. Uh, they won't have no fire. Oh, it was hell back there then. Uh. White folks didn't care nothing about no black folks back then in my young days. They was all just like mules, horses, and dogs to the white back in them days. Uh, I know they carried my daddy out in the woods and tied a uh, rope around his neck and and pulled him up by the tree, tree limb, and Dad stayed there until he passed out. So the white man is Satan himself. They stood there until Daddy passed out. When Daddy passed it out, uh, they they let him down. Let him down, and that oh, all. I guess it's about ten or fifteen minutes before my Daddy come back to his cell. And uh, when he did that, he told Daddy to get the hell off of his farm and don't come back there. A sorry working, sorry a bitch. So. Daddy left that walking that evening, uh, about sundown. We didn't. That, uh, that was on a Monday. We didn't see my daddy you know, until that next Monday. And that next Monday, uh, the <laughs> next morning, the next Monday, Daddy moved with a white man to call him, Mr. John Camel. And Mr. John Camel was good to us. He hoped Daddy moved. Hope Daddy get his stuff together and bought us a bunch of groceries. That's that's when that man look started leaving us. Go away from Mr. John Cameron about seven years, and uh, when he died, his wife sold a farm, and uh, Daddy moved back to Lono Town, and uh, he started working for a man they called Mr. John Cameron. And Mr. John Cameron worked there about all oh, about six, seven months. He bought him a new car. And he sold Daddy's old A model car. He sold it to Daddy. And that's when Daddy packed his little hole with a little head and left my mama. He went back home to his daddy. His daddy lived in Cairo, Illinois. That was his home, my daddy's home. My mama's home was in Arkansas. And uh, mm -hmm. and he jumped on mama, beat mama up. The white fellow come along now one day. Mama was crying and crying out. He asked her, what's wrong? So she told him. He said, well, I said, get what you want to carry with you. 
and down the rest, he said, and I'll send you home. And he picked me and mom up in the truck and carried us to the bus. This coming destruction of the white man, will there be any bloodshed involved in this, or will it be a complete mental uh, According to the uh, teachings of the prophets of old and uh, of God himself, there will be plenty of bloodshed. Plenty of Just take your time and listen. Because this is no easy job to break you away from an enemy that read you. Because what the enemy taught you, you believe it. Because you had no other teacher. This is quite a job to break you away from your foster parents. But with the help of Allah, I'm going to do so and then kill you, Foster Prince. Anytime we create anything, we can be sure of one thing. White people will be there greedily consuming it. But how crazy is it that for years, they were actually guilty of literally eating black bodies? White people are obsessed with us. They want to control us, oppress us, and if the current culture is any indication, they want to be us. But not many of us know that white consumption of blackness is sometimes literal. White cannibals aren't a figment of our historical imagination. Europeans often ate the mummified remains of Egyptians. Researchers argued it was for a substance Egyptian embalmers used to kill bacteria. But even when the health benefits of mummies were debunked, white people continued eating flesh. During the Atlantic slave trade, whites were known to eat the bodies of Africans when supplies ran low. Though it's suspected this occurred on many occasions, there is at least one documented case of this on the slave ship Aragante. White people also